Welcome to Jones and for Sports, where we make sports better. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Luke. I'm here with E. And, of course, we're here with Sean. And this is the latest installment of the Jones of for Sports podcast, obviously brought to you by Jones of for Sports. If you haven't heard of us, I feel bad for you at this point. But you can find us anywhere on social media. Find us on Patreon if you are a diehard fan, you want to join the roster. Exclusive and premium content is always being given out to our Patreons first. Uh, let's just jump right into this. Speaking of Patreon, one of our guys, uh, Aiden, out in Australia, um, he's one of our premium members. Yep, claps for this man. Um, one of our perks when you reach a certain echelon in our Patreon is to get your favorite teams talked about. So, Aiden, you are a Ravens, Celtics, Red Sox fan. So we are going to dissect your teams. Why not? Uh, e, would you, like, would, you, would you like to give us your thoughts on the Baltimore Ravens? I guess. Before you start, E, before you start, E, Aiden, be warned. You are talking to two, not me, two, meaning E and Luke. Guys that hate Boston, so tell you this. if they Wait. come out a little harsh on you, oh, that's yeah. what where it's coming from. But they still. Love it, right? But wait, I'll give you some. <laughs> I'll give you something worse. Let me give you a little background here. Obviously, everyone know. Everyone should know by now. Me and Luke are Yankee fans. Religious Yankee yes. fans. Basketball. I'm a uh, Lakers fan. <clears throat> oh fuck! Right. <laughs> Biggest rival, Boston Celtics. In football, Luke here is a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Oh, yeah. So this Aiden should pay a lot of attention to this. I'll do the Ravens to be a little – it's not too biased against them. Even though I feel bad because when the Red Sox come up, he, Aiden's going to hear it. But, okay, the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens, number one seed in the AFC last year, the reigning MVP, Lamar Jackson. Yep. Had a good year, we could all say. It didn't work out in the playoffs, as we all know. I mean, who would think they would – Who nobody nobody thought Derrick Henry's going to turn into the monster he turned into in that playoffs. He basically carried right. the fight into the AFC Championship. So, yeah. and, and the thing I got to give the, the Ravens credit on, they lost a lot of key defensive players before last season. Lost their leader in the middle in C.J. Mosley. Zaire Smith, and it just seemed like all they did was pick new pieces up, plan them in, and still got one of the top defenses in the league. I mean, if anyone here knows Luke, you play him twice a year, you know what that team is about. Yeah, that team is built on secondary and Lamar Jackson. They have, they might have the best. They they once again probably have the best secondary in the NFL, which and is then, annoying. And then yeah, I mean, not to, to 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 stay on that is they picked up Peters in the middle of the season. Genius move. Yeah, what well they? I mean, let's talk about this year. They traded a <clears throat> fifth round pick for Calais Campbell, who obviously he's not the Calais Campbell of old, but on that team, you're gonna still see good production out of him, because he doesn't have to be the number one pass rusher. Uh -uh. You know, they got rid of an older Terrell Suggs, who we all know is pretty much done. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, he's done. You know, so for me, I'm not. You know, I could. I know. Of, off recording, we was talking. Luke told me channel the the Jacoby Jones bomb that beat my Broncos in the Super Bowl that I could come and start saying. The one thing I could say is bad about Baltimore. Thank you for giving us that waste of time and Joe fucking Flacco. <sighs> you fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nah, but I, otherwise, now nah, they're a good team. I, I still see them being a threat through the AFC. You know, you got probably um. I wanted to say one thing about the Raven, um, and I'm not sure if the, the defensive coordinator has been there, how long he's been there, um, if it's the same one, but shout out to them for always having a solid defense. For the years, even after Ray Lewis and, and Ed Reed and all those guys, they, that defense has always been important. 
part a important part of that team and that culture. So definitely shout out to them. I think that's yeah. something that they're always gonna have. Yeah, but that, saying the Ravens had a good defense is like saying the 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 fucking every every NFL game should be on Sundays. It's, that's pretty much it goes along with the Baltimore Ravens' good defense. Yeah, that's their. It, they're Stop shitting players. on my point, man. Their entire no, yeah, identity it's like, yeah. is is centered. And again, every team that's competitive in the AFC North, they're a have defensive that first team. Look at there's a reason Pittsburgh and Baltimore have dominated that division for the last basically since 2000, with one hiccup in like 04 when Cleveland was moderately decent. Aside from that, Cincinnati was good for a while, but that team was built on defense and Carson Palmer. The Ravens are right now are built similarly with a, with a far more athletic quarterback who's much better suited for the current state of the NFL. Now, I gave my props to them. Now I got to sure. give them the criticism. When, it, when is Lamar Jackson going to prove it in the playoffs? I know it's only been two years, but his two playoff games haven't been good games. Let's be honest. You got to be honest here. Fair. I, I'm not going to shit on Lamar for that loss against the Chargers. <clears throat> okay. I don't – because here's the problem. He, when, you, when you inherit a team midseason, the chemistry is just not going to be 100% there. And that Charger defense was filthy. Mm-hmm. And you, when you have Derwin James, who's literal, sure. you, know, he, you know, he's a linebacker in terms of tackling ability. Playing safety. Right, so he could he could come up if he had to, knowing Lamar at that time and probably still now is not going to burn you with his arm. If that's just you know you can contain Lamar with a safety. It's to not this day, that. it's not that easy, but it's doable. Yeah. Case sure. in point, ask Kevin Byard and the Titans how they pulled it off. Yeah. Like I said, out of all three teams that, well, at for me at least that we'll talk about of Aiden's teams, I'm gonna be nicest on his NFL team. Because, you know, like I said, <laughs> to me, the, they out of his teams right now, they have the best chance. Uh, yeah. Right. And That's a fair statement. Also, I mean, when it comes to uh, Lamar Jackson and, and his playoff success, um, I agree with you, Luke, with the fact that, you know, that chemistry, that's very important. And, um, you know, that I think that played a role. Um, one thing that I also will give him a little bit of a break, not that much, but I'll give him a little bit of a break as far as I, I said it before the playoffs start, started that that three-week layoff was going to come back and bite them in the ass. And it did. They, were, they came out a little rusty, and yeah. it showed. So um, I give him a little slack with that. But I do agree with you, E. Eventually, we are going to have to see him take that next step to be like, all right, you, you're definitely that dude. You're definitely that dude, and it's just not a regular season thing because we know there's plenty of quarterbacks that are great in the regular season and then shit in the fucking the playoffs. So, to me, to um, me, don't get but me But, yeah, he's definitely going to have to take that shit. To me, listen, <clears throat> to me, I see, it, I see it a lot, especially, you know, in the playoffs with the NFL. When you have the super athletic quarterback, it's all good in the regular season, but you got to be a quarterback in the playoffs. You have to be. Yep. For sure. I, I think I think let's just be real and I'll I'll shut up about the Ravens, at least on my end after this. If you're Lamar Jackson, the guy you want to emulate is Russell Wilson during the Legion of Boom era from the Seahawks. Yeah. Where he had mm. legs. Now granted, Russell Wilson played baseball his entire life. He has the elite arm talent that I'm not gonna say Lamar doesn't have. He just hasn't fully unlocked it yet. But if there's one guy to emulate, that has to be the guy. And one thing, and one thing. Absolutely. I just, I got to get this out too. Another thing, Baltimore Raven fans, you don't want him and Hollywood Brown working out with AB. Oh, fuck no. That's bad. Mm. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. Get out of there ASAP. (laughs) Arbaugh should be on the phone with him saying, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. Social distancing. Like, get out of there. Yeah, right. That's, that's not who you want him hanging out with in the offseason. No. 
Yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. Hell no. All right, Sean, what do you got on the Boston Celtics? The Boston Celtics. Now, that's a team that um, is very interesting to talk about because of the past few years that they had to go through with um, – even bringing it back to, to Isaiah Thomas when he was there and him bringing them as far as he did. And then they go with the change to Kyrie Irving. And then that happened. And now <laughs> they came back this year. <laughs> that happened. And then uh, um, they got Kemba and they got the same team. And honestly, from my opinion, um, I want to see what your thoughts are as well, E. Um, my opinion on the Boston Celtics is very impressed. I'm very impressed with them, even though people, some people would like to say they, they should be at the number one or number two, but I don't think people are giving uh, the rest of the teams in that Eastern Conference enough credit. Everyone always looks at, at the Eastern Conference and look at it as a weak conference. You know, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think it's gotten better. Clearly, the Western Conference is the better conference. But the Eastern Conference has gotten better. So I think a lot of those teams deserve the respect. And as far as the Celtics goes, I think that's a team to be reckoned with. Now, I don't think they're a team that will go. If the NBA were to resume and the playoffs were to start, I don't think they're a team that's going to reach the Eastern Conference finals. They have the potential, but I don't think they're there yet. But that is a team that I think with a few more years with – uh, Kemba, they can be right, or just another year, maybe just one year, and maybe another piece like a center or something like that. That's a team that could be in the conversation for the the finals in a few years. But as of right now, I think they're just re, kind of rebuilding. But they still got mom. Yeah, let me let me give the Celtics the one piece of credit that I think they deserve. I think with the Celtics. The credit has to be given for it just, a team that will be reckoned with in the future. But right now, they they got a few more things to work out. But, E, yeah, I, I want to hear what you think. Uh, Luke had a point, so I'll yeah. let you go first. Yeah, apologies for the difficulties. The entire world is using Zoom, so we're, just, we're trying to get our bandwidth here. Yeah. Um, the one thing that – and again, anyone who follows this channel knows that me and the NBA are like, uh, my view on the NBA is like Crohn's disease. It's just, it's terrible. I hate it. Um, <laughs> but as a college basketball nut, I do think the Celtics are probably right now one of the best teams in terms of drafting and finding diamonds in the rough, which is good because oh, yeah. if you're going to build a sustainable winner, you have to not only hit on your first round guys, but you got to be able to find those guys like the, like the Warriors, for example, with Draymond in the second round. Yeah, at least key contributors. I'm not saying – or even um, what the Warriors got this past year in the kid from uh, Villanova. Uh, his name is – I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he's leading the team in points right now, mainly because of Curry's injury. But second round pick. So for what it's worth, if you keep on this trajectory of hitting on these late round picks and finding guys like Tatum, sky's really the limit. Mm -hmm. Especially if the Bucks lose the sure. odds. Um, yeah. Uh, before I say anything, the, the reason why, Sean, I think the East gets slept on a lot is because the East usually has just that one superstar. Where the West has – Star spread out across, so it looks like the East just gets mm -hmm. right now. Before we, how many years was it? LeBron was the East. Now, right now, it's Giannis. You know, yep. do I think the Celt the Celtics got a superstar coming up in Jason Tatum? Mm -hmm. Obviously, his rookie year was phenomenal. He took a little minor step step back last year. But this year, he's only picked it back up, and he raised his game. He's definitely the leader of that team. You know, and, I mean, like you said. They had the Kyrie they, effect last year. Yeah, of course. That, and then having the, you know, the the big man issue is true, true, but we all know they could have had AD, but that didn't happen because the way they treated Isaiah Thomas, AD didn't want to be there. And mm -hmm. in a way, it kind of works out because you don't have to give up. 
Tatum or Jalen Brown, you know, or your scrappy guys like Marcus Smart. You know? Yeah. I can I can easily Absolutely. sit on I can easily sit on the Celtics being a Laker fan. <laughs> they took a finals away from Kobe. Got them back, but I can easily sit on them. But I'm gonna keep it, you know. <laughs> do do I believe that they're a championship contender? Not really. I just don't think they, they're fully there to get past Toronto or Milwaukee. Because as of right now, Toronto and Milwaukee are my favorites in the East. Is it also I fair to say to that they don't that they lack what every other primary contender has, which is an MVP caliber player? Yeah, Tatum's not there yet. Right. Yeah. A couple more years we can talk. It just it, as a as exactly. a very distant outside observer, and um, I mean they, they just don't have it. Yeah, like to me, I have them as maybe my third <clears throat> or fourth best team in the the mm-hmm. East. Like if we talk about the playoffs right now, because I feel like Miami's a sneaky team. Miami defensively has a team that can guard against anybody. We've seen what Miami did to the Bucks. Miami has probably the only team that. Can guard any position one through five with this with their line. Yeah, yeah. Philly, I have yeah. no faith in Philly. Philly, <laughs> bye. I don't care. Sean, you know me and you both. Yeah. Talk. I don't believe in Ben Simmons, and Pete will be added yeah, there in a few. It's it's, a, it's over for Philly. No, no, yeah. That team gonna gonna, have to restart that, team, that process. That team, <laughs> that team will be broken up in two years, and Pete will not be there. Yeah, exactly. But it it will. For, I agree 100%. As for the Celtics, don't like it. Like, you know, it was a good move from leaving, from letting Kyrie walk and bringing in Kemba. He fits that team well. He fits Bradley, uh, Brad Stevens' system perfectly. Because he's not, obviously, he's ball dominant because he's a scorer, but he doesn't need to be the number one scorer. And you, you know why I think Kemba fit better than Kyrie besides you know, the talent and stuff. I think Kimba fit better because just like the rest of those guys on that team, he still has something to prove. He's been in Charlotte and he's, he's killed in Charlotte, but hey, they haven't won shit. So he came to Boston like, look, I'm not here thinking that I'm the shit because my name was Kyrie Irving and I've got a championship ring and, you know, I'm going to make this shit happen. I got to work just like the rest of you guys. So, and you're starting to see it. He's, he didn't have, guys like that on short on Charlotte. So the chemistry he has with these better players, these younger players, is just beautiful. So I think, like you said, they're not ready now, but I think in the future, yeah. if they keep that team together, and, and, and they're going to be a dominant team. Like I said, you know, for them, the big thing is the progression of, obviously, you know, you got guys, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, those are more like, side, not, not sidekick, but the second role guys. Their key guy is going to be Tatum. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's a little biased for me because I'm a Duke fan, and I hated him being drafted there, especially the same draft we go ahead and take Lonzo. We could have had Tatum. <laughs> but, nah, Tatum's their guy. You know, he's showing he's a scorer. He gave my Lakers the business this year. Right. So, also, yeah, the Celtics definitely – they're going to be a contender in the East for a long time. Yeah. Sure. Also, also fair to say that losing Kyrie is a blessing, obviously on multiple levels. But again, bringing in uh, a Kemba and even having guys like Hayward who don't really strike you or play as like the me first guy. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing you can have when your nucleus is young and developing. I tell you this, though. I tell you this. To go along with Sean's point saying they need more of a big man, I see Hayward being that piece that moves for a big man. Wouldn't shock. Me. Yeah. I can yeah. see maybe a Kevin Love. Kevin, Kevin Love, Love would be he, he just guy, so he like replaces that. what Al Horford gave you. Mm-hmm. Kevin That's Love would be the one move I think really perfect. hurt them. The one move I think hurt Boston going into the season was losing Al Horford. Yeah, definitely. That the pick and roll between him and Kemba would have been nasty. Would have been dirty, yeah. Nasty. I agree. All right, so let's oh. move into some baseball. Speaking talk about hold on, I got I got give me the intro. Speaking of dirty, 
And I, I know E was cordial with his whole, you know, oh, I hate, you know, I'm a Laker fan, but I'm going to play. Oh, I'm not, uh, it, it, no, 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 I'm not being nice about this one. Fuck that. <laughs> Hold on. Well, uh, I, I, while, while he's doing that, all pleasantries are now out the go. fucking window. Here we go. Yeah, there Here you go. go. Um, all pleasantries are out the window now. Um, and I'm going to tell you why, because it's your team's own fucking fault. You committed the cardinal sin in baseball about three, four years ago. You overpaid for Rusny Castillo, who hasn't played in the majors for the last three years. We cover that on Take It Deep, which if you don't listen to that, not specifically Aiden, but all of you, go do that too because that's a good fucking show. Secondly, you traded the farm for Chris Sale. Never should have done that. Unwilling to change his mechanics. Just got Tommy John, which had there been a season right now, that would actually be monumentally hurting you because Eduardo Rodriguez, not an ace. Moving bets, you had to do because you didn't have any more fucking money. And you should have known known that bets was going to be a $350 plus million player because he's played like it ever since he got there. But instead, you opted to pay David Price way too much money. As mentioned, you gave Chris Sale, you know, you overpaid for Chris Sale and it's costing you now because you don't have a farm anymore. Wait, just before you go on, go and the team you traded for Sale, bringing up a pretty <laughs> good young team, Yeah, you know, in the White Sox. Yep. And then not to mention what makes it hurt more Dustin Pedroia can't stay healthy. He's now unreliable. He's a li- He's the Boston version of Jacoby Ellsbury, which is hilarious. Because Yohan Moncada got slotted in at second base and played, as of right now, he's about to enter his peak. So you missed out on that big time. So aside, all the other things aside. And you gave Nathan Amaldi a contract. You know, that- yeah, but that, yeah, but his, his, his arm is fine. He's, he just is what he is. Um, you still don't have a bullpen, which is gonna which is gonna kill you when you're playing Tampa 18 times a year. The lineup is okay. Your shining star is Devers, and you have the most underrated shortstop in baseball in Xander Bogarts. I have no problem giving Bogarts his credit because he just right. shuts up and He's does. Does. He's a fucking stud. Can't field for dick, but elite. He's gonna, bat. He's gonna hit you high 300. Guaranteed to hit you 300. Um, let's see. Verdugo was a good bring back in terms of replacing bets. I guess the only problem is that at that right field corner in Fenway is a fickle bitch and it will take a lot more time than I think he's prepared for. You have, they have probably the best defensive center fielder. Uh, I'm not going to give him that. He has the best arm, not even close top three glove. Sure. But best overall, no. Best arm, 100%, though. Uh, and Ben Intendi can't seem to figure out – He, we know what his role is. He's a good left fielder for you. Yeah. I just – he's he's up and down. It would be nice if he could just consistently – like if you got Chris Davis on Oakland, not Baltimore – like that level of consistency where he was going to not literally hit you two, you know, 243 or 237 every year. But like, if you could get a predictable range from him, that'd be good instead of streaky. Streaky is, streaky is bad. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad. Um, let's see. Christian Vasquez is an underrated catcher. I'll give you credit there. Um, and let's also not forget uh, China made it possible for you to not get your uh, suspension and punishment from the 2018 World Series. So for any Red Sox fan who's thinking like, yo, yo, doing the cartoon villain hands where you think you got away with it, no. No, 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 no. We didn't forget. Oh, yeah. Um, realistically, I'll give – and we're going to touch on this on Take It Deep in a couple weeks – you're not making the playoffs. You don't have the pitching without sale. You definitely don't have the bullpen. The lineup is significantly weakened without Mookie there because J.D. Martinez is now your only real threat. 
and you can now pitch around him because Verdugo is not developed enough to be protection. And you're gonna and you're forced to bat Rafael Devers probably in the two hole just because you're gonna need a guy behind, let's say, a Bogarts or a Benintendi just to get on base. Yeah, Devers will get on base. Yeah. That's been proven now. Yeah. He's ascending. He's your best player. He's your best asset. If you treat him with, with the same respect you just treated Mookie, you're fucked. Unless you trade sure. him in about two years for a massive haul of prospects akin to what you traded for sale. Did I miss anything? Uh, no. The only thing you did miss was hiring uh, Dave Dombrowski as your GM. That fucked you, but he's gone who's now. Known, who's known for burning team's farm systems that is down. True. Ask the Tigers about that Miguel Cabrera contract. Like, that guy, he's all up he, – He's all about the by now, by now, almost try to be like George Steinbrenner-ish. Yep. But one thing, yes, yeah, Steinbrenner wanted all the top guys. Uh-huh. But let's be honest, Brian Cashman's somewhat of a fucking evil genius. <laughs> Randy Levine, too. Don't shortchange Levine. You no, know, these guys, you know, these guys know what they're doing. Yeah. Obviously, you can see the new, new way that the Yankee team is built now is a Cashman-built team. You know, not burning a farm system where now to to compete with not you're not only competing with the Yankees who just probably signed who just signed the best pitcher on the market in the last how many years and who have one of the top lineups in baseball, but you're competing with the Tampa Bay Rays who's a stacked team like their depth goes on and on. Yeah. You know, and so now you 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 you're basically going to be fighting with the Blue Jays for third place. Yeah. Who the Blue Jays got none but young guys who don't have nothing to lose and just got anything to prove who can probably yeah. go out. And there's a chance they could take Boston for third place. Yeah. You yeah. don't have the pitching. Nope. And obviously, you know, in the AL East, you need pitching. If Toronto calls up Nate Pearson, you have a worse rotation than Toronto. And, and, and like you said, Eduardo Rodriguez is going to be your number one starter. Also, just – just to flex a little bit, uh, the old brain here, you should have known that Dombrowski was a bad move because he's also responsible for assembling and partially responsible for the teardown of the 1997 Florida Marlins. So I'm just throwing this out there that Dave Dombrowski should be treated in baseball with the same respect that we are currently giving coronavirus. Just stay the fuck away <laughs> from Dave because he's going to burn you all your room, all your money on three, maybe two, three guys. You're going to be handcuffed when those contracts are proving <clears throat> worthless and you're fucked. I, I mean, and just to even go back, like the price contract, mm -hmm. the closest team to the Red Sox was the Cardinals. And I don't even think they offered over 200 million for him. Nope. You don't offer him what you offer him. Don't get me wrong. As a Yankee fan, I'm sad to see David Price go. Uh -huh. Yeah, Gary liked extra batting practice. Yeah. Gary Sanchez was good for two home runs a game off David Price. <laughs> and uh, plus, he didn't get along with Boston media, so it just kind of fucked everything yeah. else up there. You know, the, the fact that he would find ways to not pitch against the Yankees, I loved it. Yeah. But, yeah, like, Dombrowski fucked you guys, and you, I guess, like, Listen, I know obviously with the history, you have to, your main competition is going to be the Yankees there. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have what the Yankees have to do what they're doing, don't try to compete. But you also don't have the assets. And we don't have an elite system anymore. No. But we're not a bottom third. That's the difference. We still have guys like Schmidt, King, you know, Davey Garcia, tradable fucking assets. Even Esteban Floreal is still highly touted. We have prospects. We have pieces, even at the major league level. We have young cornerstone, Glaber Torres, Judge players. Yeah. Even fucking Andahar is going to contribute as an outfielder now. I'm not saying you look – I'm not saying you copy the blueprint, but you, you learn from the mistakes of other teams, which is you never sell the farm for and, one guy ever. And, to be honest, you shot yourself in your foot by putting it, letting it be out there how much you needed Mookie Betts traded. Also true. Because what you could have got for him, 
compared to what you got, it's almost DeAndre Hopkins to the Cardinals bullshit. Yeah. You could if you, they, that move should have been made last year on July thirty first at the deadline, and you would have fleeced a contender. A hundred percent. It the 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 timing was terrible. Dombrowski needed to go. The best thing of all this is that Dombrowski's gone. Yeah. Honestly, that's that's your saving grace. Kyan Bloom is coming from Tampa, which is uh, phenomenal because that team will literally take a pile of dog shit and make it hit three hundred. Yep. So that's just for what it is. That's 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 amazing. Um, Sean, any thoughts on the Red Sox? Nope. That a boy. <laughs> um, and then real quick, the Bruins were doing great until the season went off the rails. Um, losing to the Blues in the Cup Finals last year probably still hurts, but you made it. I mean, you're you were you were Eastern Conference champion, so yeah. I'm not going to pretend to know anything else about hockey. Um, moving on, the NFL, because we are sports deprived, we are in a fucking sports famine. Decided to release the NFL All Decade team. Did any of y'all have any gripes with the list? Um, I'll start and I'll say I didn't have a problem with it, but I could understand. I do understand where some people had a a problem with Breeze uh, not being, uh, getting it over Rodgers. Um, Rodgers, we all know, was one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time as far as throwing the ball goes and his excellent, excellent, let's see. Uh, when he's out there playing, moving, being mobile, and things like that. But um, some of the the accomplishments that Breeze has done and the consistency as winning, I can understand why people would say what they said because Breeze has had a a lot more consistent winning. Now, he hasn't gotten uh, a chip in that since then, and – Rodgers has, but it, it was that literally that the year after um, Breeze won it in 2010. So um, it's been 10 years since both of them yeah. won a championship. But um, I don't have a problem with it. Obviously, Brady's number one. There's no question about that. Um, there's no. I don't even think there's a debate to yeah. be had with him being at number one. Nope. But I can understand why people would have a little bit of problem. But I'm okay with Rodgers being – um, at number two, and Breeze being uh, three. Um, yeah, like it, it, they. If you want to look at all the numbers, they both have one championship. But let's look at the numbers, the stats. Who's up there at number one, or is probably gonna make number one this upcoming year? Breeze, and he has records over Brady. Yep. Mm-hmm. To say that Rodgers has been the better quarterback has decade. Rodgers has, you know, the throws, the the hail marys, the throw against your Cowboys. Sorry, mm-hmm. Sean. But if you want to look at the consistent numbers, it's Breeze. Yep. It's Breeze, and you want to keep it all the way. When Breeze got to New Orleans, things changed. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Rogers took over a team that had Brett Favre. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there's no way Bree should be should in, should be under Rogers in any list, all time list, anything. Yep. The Not one, a the one, one, the one pushback I would have towards you, E, is that you mentioned um, him being one or about to be number one, and you know, uh, all time passing or whatever it is. Um, and things like that. I, I agree with, like, I understand why people consider that, you know, it's an all time list. I get it. But at the same time, some people, I feel like forget what the actual requirement is. The requirement is in that 10 year span. So him being an all time, okay. Being number one, that doesn't really matter. It's a great accomplishment, but it doesn't matter within that 10 year span. But I do agree he still has been consistent. He's been um, 
great throughout all those years. And I think the reason why they gave it to Rodgers is because his pass and efficiency and his intercept rate, intercept to touchdown rating uh, ratio is all time high. No one's ever gonna, I don't think, may never pass it. I mean, he's breaking records too. He's doing it quietly because his team isn't producing as well as the Saints. But Rogers still is is playing well. His just team just hasn't been playing all that great. So I think that's why he gets a little bit of the slot. Yeah, but if you if we look at the ten years, I'm sorry, Luke, before you go, we're good. Who had there's years that Rogers didn't have that year, and to me, the reason why I say it's Breeze is Breeze is consistent through these ten years. How many of these ten years does Breeze have to be maybe top three or top five in yards, touchdowns, completions, completion percentage? Rogers is probably the most one of the most accurate passes. But yeah. you, 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 you got to. I'm look. I'm not even talking about all time. I'm talking about through these ten years. Breeze stats are there. Breeze is on these lists because of these ten years. Breeze wasn't really that much of a thought when he was in San Diego with the Chargers. Yeah, I think it also has to do with the team, though. But they've both never really had the top weapons that neither had. What did he had? He had Jimmy Graham for. When Jimmy Graham was good for what two three years? Yeah, but they they were they were a dominant team back then. And but let's let's know, look at Aaron Rodgers had Greg Jennings when Greg Jennings was good. Mm-hmm. Devontae but Adams. He had. Mm. He has Devontae. He has Devontae Adams right now. Mm-hmm. But I, I, if, if I had to say last, a better team, Breeze, I would say it's Breeze over Rogers. Breeze over, this, over, the last, the last Breeze, over the last two or three years, Mike Thomas is becoming the second best receiver in the game, if not the best. Mm-hmm. But how much of that do you think comes along with playing with Drew Brees? No, it goes both ways. I, I'm just saying, I think if you had to say in the past 10 years – whose team, who had the better team, who had a little bit more help, I would give it to Breeze because some of the talent that he's had around him. That, plus, you have to give him and, a huge plus and, with his coach. His coach is way above. Yeah, no, no, Ooh. and that, that plus the fucking Green Bay Packers Ooh. don't know how to fucking draft. The Packers can't draft to save their sure. life. <clears throat> let, yeah. me, let me say this. Aaron Rodgers is a moments quarterback. Breeze is a legacy quarterback. Rodgers has been the major benefactor of having been in an organization who, frankly, was dominant for a decade. They, the Bears sucked. The Lions will always suck. They're the NFC version of the Browns. And the Vikings had moments but were never ascendant to the point where they were going to take a stranglehold over a conference the way the Packers could and did. Now, Breeze is a better quarterback. Breeze did more with less talented teams top to bottom. I know he has no impact on the defense but could carry a lesser team farther. Breeze would also probably, and I will take this to my grave, should have had two Super Bowls had it not been for that fucking pass interference call in the NFC title game against the Rams. Oh, yeah, we would have beaten that pass. We we were robbed of seeing Breeze, Brady, and the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. 100%. Any quarterback who's breaking records and is in the conversation with the names Brady and Manning cannot be ignored fucking can't be ignored and again breeze's entire career aside from that one super bowl has been defined by getting fucked even when he was a charger he had marty schottenheimer luck where things were going to crash and burn because schottenheimer is the most cursed man I believe in NFL history. <laughs> then he went to New Orleans, 
They had to win because the hurricane. You know, and they started playing better. Breeze is just a legendary football player. Rodgers is no slouch. Rodgers is a Hall of Famer. Of course. Ask any Packer fan, gun to their head, you taking Favre or Rodgers, at least, in my opinion, half are taking Brett Favre. No Saint fan will ever take, let's just say, Archie Manning over Drew Breeze. Yeah, you're, they, <laughs> honestly, honestly, who the fuck else have they had? Yeah, Aaron Brooks. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't that's, have that's anything, not, so it's obvious. Aaron Brees. Brooks is more known for being the cousin of Michael Vick instead of being a, a, a quarterback, talented quarterback. Right. So I'm just saying, Breeze is a once in a lifetime talent. Rogers is as well, but Breeze, given the teams that he's had for the same amount of time, did not have the consistent, talented roster. Even when the Packers would fuck up draft picks, they would always do well in free agency. That was the difference. And then they would hit on guys like Adams, and everything is better. Yeah. Or Aaron Jones. Or, you know, I mean, that's more now, but I'm just – either way. I hear that, but I don't know. I feel like if I had to pick a quarterback – between them two, I would pick Rodgers because really? if it's – if I'm – listen, if I – if the game's on the line and I need a quarterback to make a perfect fucking throw, who am I picking, Rodgers or Breeze? There's no question I'm picking Rodgers. We've seen him do it time and time again, well, making course, that, pinpoint throws yeah, but when needed like, to be. You're, that, that just proves Luke's point with saying Rodgers is – A moment's quarterback. Breeze is legacy. Breeze, not, listen, Breeze is the no, guy. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Wrong if, I had to pick. If, yeah, no, but no, no, no. You're never going to be wrong if they if you take either or. Yeah. Right. Hall of Fame quarterbacks, all of that. I'm just saying, sure. when you're doing lists of all this, this, that, and you want to, and you're ranking them based on that, the numbers and shit, do it right and you know the numbers. Obviously, the one thing that puts Brady up there is the fucking championships. Yeah. Because let let's be honest, mm -hmm. you take the championships away from Brady, he's probably he's probably third. Yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't have yeah. numbers like that. Right. His numbers he now doesn't. are because he's played twenty fucking years. Mm -hmm. You know, in a system where he's in, in a system where he's not really gonna take hits, where he's gonna be hurt. And has always had a solid top ten defense for most of his career. And you ha and he's probably and he's played under the best coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, so that's why yeah, there's no question. You know, yeah. like like I said, none of us are wrong here. Yeah, but all I say is, if yeah, you know, it, it, it can go either way. It can go either way. Yeah, I will. I'll I'll just stake my final claim on this. When you have both careers are over, and both are going into Canton, because that's a hundred percent happening. Breeze will be higher on all the key quarterback lists than Rodgers. Yep. That, to me, is the distinguishing factor between the two of them. Rodgers is the guy I want, I would say, maybe in the fourth quarter with five minutes left, and I'm down by ten. Breeze is the guy – if I'm – Breeze is the guy that I will build around and be confident that I'm good under center for at least the next 10 years. Not as of right this second, but if I'm taking him from the Chargers in free agency, I can build a franchise around him and I'm gold. Yep. All I got to do is get a defense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Moving on. In – Despite the fact that we are sports deprived, again, fuck you, China. Um, <laughs> various leagues, specifically the MLB and the NBA, have decided to put out and hold esports tournaments of their leagues' respective games. NBA, obviously, 2K. MLB, obviously, MLB the show. Uh, Again, since me and the NBA don't mix, are they doing the 2K tournament for charity? I think like MLB? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. I, I know think the, the winner the winner gets to pick what charity it goes to. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, real quick on the NBA, uh, RIP to Carl Towns' mother. That's fucking horrible. Yes. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that was that was fucked up. Prayers Again, out fuck you, China. Um, but what I, I personally have been watching the 2K, not the 2K, the MLB, the show tournament, as much as humanly possible. Um, my only real gripe with it is that they don't seem to have the tech part of it down. They're, they're supposed to be streaming on Twitch and YouTube. And like the first night of this where it was Blake Snell playing as Tampa versus Amir Garrett for the Reds, they couldn't get the YouTube to work. And they didn't redirect all the, the attention to Blake Snell and Garrett's Twitch feed until it was in the third inning. Yeah, These are only was, three inning games. Yeah, I seen – I was watching a little between uh, Adam Greenlee. <clears throat> yeah. You know, our New York Yankee psychopath. Oh, Tom Greenlee, our resident axe murderer, yes. And uh, I, think it was, I think he was playing Dwight Smith from Baltimore. Uh, It's Baltimore. Who the fuck cares? Yeah, exactly. They were playing them, and that was another – yeah, like you said, like, compared to what – obviously, you know, hello, MLB Network, this was a perfect thing for you to pick up on because at least ESPN picked the, the 2K up, and, they, you know, they show both players playing, you know, both players talking to each other, everything like that, which is way better than what we get from the MLB one. Yeah. Like, the, the Canely one I was watching, he wasn't even talking with whoever he was playing against. Yeah. Well, the other, the other thing too, and and again, if the, if this comes off slightly racist, I don't really care. You're half the problem with the MLB is that a lot of the guys they pick, their English is not yeah. up to standard. I'm gonna say, so if you're putting Blake Snell or Lance McCullers versus, let's say, Eduardo Rodriguez or Fernando Tatis Jr. or you know any anyone like that, it's gonna be. Robert Flores talking to mainly Blake Snell. Yeah. Also, and again, I'm not trying to shit completely on the Red Sox here. It was obvious when Snell played Rodriguez. Eduardo Rodriguez does not play the show nearly as much. It was not a competitive game. <laughs> if you're going to give me a tournament with the players, I get it. Like, there's an excitement that you get to see your, you know, some of your favorite guys doing something. And I love that, like, Tatis is the, is the, Padres here, but come the fuck on. No, of course. Like, that, that, that at least like... pick the guys who – so what I personally would have done, if, if, if nobody on, let's say, the Indians, if Carlos Santana is not that big of a gamer and Lindor is not a gamer and Jose Ramirez isn't a gamer, then fucking give me one of the pro streamers on YouTube that are getting a million views per video – and have them go play Blake Snell and Amir Garrett, who are dominantly good at this game. Yeah, with that, like, like you know, like that's why to me, if anybody's ever listened to the R two C two podcast, there's always talk about how big of a gamer Tommy Canely is. Uh-huh. So that would be like the Yankees say, "No, Tommy, you're not a big enough star. Let's put a uh, Gary, yeah, right, or, or Glaber." Yep. You know, like you said, if you're gonna do things like that, put guys who know what the fuck they're doing in the game. Right. At least make it a watchable stream. Exactly. NBA players, to their credit, are widely known for being wildly into 2K. Yeah. So even though I'm not watching it, I can I mean, imagine the product look, is better. If you look at majority of the guys who the NBA put in this tournament, you got, you know, especially a lot of the younger guys who are more into the gaming, the Trey Youngs, you know, the DeAndre Aytons, you know, the younger guys. You're not seeing – LeBron, yeah. seeing, you know, you got guys who during the think, season we, we hear things that they were on, they were playing Fortnite with fans online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that the NBA uh, tournament was was a better product than yes. um, from what Luke says in the uh, MLB, the show tournament. Um but the only thing I probably would say about the NBA, the 2K tournament that I think they should do if they're going to do another tournament is kind of like how Luke said, um, just match it up better, you know, base it off of, you know, the guys' rankings in 2K. Like if they're all – I'm pretty sure almost every 2K – I mean um, NBA player t- plays 2K. So – and they most likely play online and they have a ranking. So from there, they should get 
uh, you know, find their rankings and match it up that way or, and build or, the tournament or, that or, way. That way it's been, fairer, more fair. What would have been better is if they <clears> took <throat> at least this from the uh, the MLB. The guys weren't really representing one team. Trey Young one day yeah. picked Milwaukee. The next game, I think he was Miami. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, DeAndre ain't plays for the Suns. He probably wasn't going to pick his own Phoenix Suns team. Yeah. But at least – Right, you know, exactly. Have a guy, if you're going to go – you know, if you're going to say, all right, I'm playing with the Lakers, have that guy beat the Lakers through the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see it like case. that. Conversely, I would make the argument – I like that too. I, I, yeah. I also could see it being you can pick – you have to pick a new team every every time, and that way it forces the players to um, strategically pick when, like, all right, if I'm going to make it to the finals, I want the Lakers to be – I want to pick the Lakers, yeah, so I'm not going to pick the Lakers until then. Yeah. You know, shit like that. I think that would be cool too. Yeah. <clears throat> I would also – But other, overall, I think it's cool that they're doing it. If you're the MLB – like, obviously, the NFL has their key streamer. It's Juju. That's abundantly obvious. Juju is the fucking man. And I wouldn't be shocked if the NFL, considering it's already their offseason anyway, did something similar. Yeah. The only oh, yeah, thing it's definitely. MLB has been so bad at promoting an esports presence for their younger guys, like their key, like yeah. for the Cubs, for example. <sighs> How the fuck is Javi Baez not doing this? The cover athlete. Right. Literally. <laughs> Fucking get it. <laughs> like, you got to – if you're the MLB, your strength is in your streamers, which is guys like Kevin G.O.D., Magunski, Coogs. Yes, I watch all of their fucking channels. But I'm that much of a nerd, and I'm that much baseball repressed right now, where I've been watching legitimately good – MLB the show players play ranked seasons, play Diamond Dynasty, which is arguably the biggest and best feature of that game, aside from Road to the Show. You could have it. I'm not saying you rushed the product because I get you're trying to have some sort of a season. A little bit more planning should have been done, but I do love that it's for charity, it's not for personal gain. Yeah. It's abundantly clear, though, that there's an oil and water level separation between the top and the bottom. Yeah. It's not competitive. Yeah. Trevor May got his doors blown off by Amir Garrett. It's not – It's not. the best game was Snell Garrett. It was one nothing, and Garrett won on a bunt in the fourth inning. <laughs> Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's end it off with this. The NFL being the NFL, probably the most active partner with Nike right now in terms of revamping teams images. We saw the Colts come out with a new secondary, which by the way, kudos to them for making a fire secondary logo. Um, but we've had three new jerseys drop in the last two weeks. Uniforms, I should say. The Cleveland Browns released theirs today at literally noon. Kudos to them. And also, and you know if I'm complimenting the Browns, this is a, a big thing for them. All their proceeds off sales of their new jerseys are going to uh, charitable organizations for, I believe, frontline medical workers fighting this virus. Yes, so okay. kudos to you, Cleveland. I got I give you. I'll give you one of these. That's a classy move. Sure. I like where your head's at. However, all you did was bring back the jerseys before you went and did your ones from the past three. Mm -hmm. all, but you, they kept the color rush, which was their best jersey by far. Yeah. And their color rush is actually far. good. But you kept the Joe Hayden yeah. era jersey, which I'm fine with. Yeah. I don't mind it. It's a, They never should have left <laughs> that look. They just shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with those. I really don't. The Browns jerseys, they're unique. 
it's a love hate, but with given the color scheme and just the classic appeal of it, I don't have a problem with it. What do y'all think on on Cleveland? Yeah, I like it. I mean, yeah, I like that you went back because the other one sucked. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, to be honest, out of yeah, the, I mean, I like the white one the best. You know, I'm not a yeah. big fan of having the brown and orange together. Yeah. So, to me, the white one is the better looking one. Yeah. And but the yeah. color rush. Yeah. For sure. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for the, uh, the color rush jersey. Um, other than that, they don't really – you know, appease my eyes yeah, that much. Because it's, it's something we've seen already. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's nothing crazy to talk about. We, yeah. Like you said, we've seen it already. So, but to Luke's point, kudos to them for what they're doing. For yeah. sure. Yeah, no, that, definitely. That's fucking that, that, that part of it at least makes, you know, the most sense. So now let me ask you all this. We're at a fork in the road. Do we take the really good? Or they're really fucking bad. Let's go bad so we can end it on a good note. Okay. Atlanta, <laughs> you spent two fucking years building a uniform. <laughs> two years building a uniform. And I saw them. And first off, fuck you, Todd Gurley. How dare you take Dion's 21, by the way? That's a fuck you move. Agreed, but, 100%. But. 100%. But. The only thing you did right was bring back the Dirty Bird alternate retro. Thank you. Yeah. That's the only thing you – honestly, yeah. those should just be their uniforms. Thank you. Until that franchise folds. I yeah. I would be fine with them going back to the rookie year Michael Vick jerseys. 100%. The fo- Yeah, hell yeah. We have learned. We have learned. You cannot do a gradient – fade ever it's only worked once and it was on the mario lemieux penguin jerseys with the kind of fancy penguin with this with the fade right here on the center stripe okay the 93 94 la kings jerseys had it they were fucking terrible the vancouver canucks tried it about 10 12 ish years ago with the navy fade to red it looked fucking horrible yeah don't Ever do yeah. a gradient fade. I saw these jerseys, and the first thing that came into my head, arena football. They look terrible. Mm. They look – they don't look – like, people shit on, shit on the Jets jerseys, which I actually love because they look like a high school team. Yeah. That Falcon fade jersey, to me, looks like Texas Pop Warner try-hard level bullshit. Like Friday night type <laughs> bullshit. It's fucking disgusting. But the solid color ones, I don't hate. They're just you should have just went back to the fucking yeah. They're, they're okay. Picks. Or the dirty birds. Yeah, to be honest, that's my favorite jersey of theirs. Is their hard. old school? Fuck yes, that's a gorgeous jersey with the, with with the, the silver pants, Falcon logo on the shoulder. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. could have given me the old yeah. pants, the old the Michael stripe, Vick ones. Those shirt. are beautiful. That old and black the new the white number with the red stitching in the number. Yeah. You know, me and Sean yep. put the football. Yeah. Sean, I think you can agree with me. I think I could have designed a better jersey because I designed some of ours for our team. I think we could have designed a better look. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I could have put- – And it's funny you say that because I said that. I was like, the guys on my team could have designed a better jersey than that shit. I mean, I, fuck. Dude, I could have had a – My boy E. Uh, I could have had a colorblind <laughs> first grader make a better fucking jersey. That's hard. Just scribble some shit on paper and we'll just fucking make it. You know, like, you know, the, in the <laughs> perfect time to go back to that all black jersey. Yes. You know – Think about the color. Yeah. To me, when when the Eagles or the the or the Ravens go with the all black look, Pittsburgh's color rush. Pittsburgh, and then you have that red undertone, like it's perfect for you. You have the three mm-hmm. four, the three easiest colors. John, look at that jersey behind you. You take that yellow out. How many different jerseys do the Heat come out with? Red, black, and white. The best looking colors. <laughs> yeah. 
I will, yep. even I'll take it a step right. further. The Oakland Raiders are credited all the time with the best looking jersey in football, which I don't really have that much of an issue with. It's silver, it's black. Ooh. Oakland. Oh, okay. or fucking Las Vegas, whatever. Fuck them. Either way. Yes, fuck them. Either way, the jerseys are gorgeous. The black, the silver, and the white is never to be fucked with. They will never do anything that drastic and try hard. And if they did, the fans yeah, might no actually reason. burn the stadium to the ground. You, why the fuck? You had all you had. You had the primetime era Dirty Bird Falcons, black shirt, silver pants, black helmet, and you fucked that up. You know how hard that is. <laughs> That's like There's a team for no one for fucking up. Well, dude, they can't shake 28-3. See? <laughs> that they shit just fucking can. can't. Like that, yeah, that Super Bowl is still... That was it. They got they, to the peak. Yeah. That halftime, dude, that having, Super Bowl. Dude, they're, they're slowly becoming not. the NFL fucking version of the Seattle, Seattle Mariners. They're yeah. just going down the fucking tubes. Now, yeah. I'm going to get angry if I keep talking about those fucking Falcon jerseys. Tampa Bay, I get it. You got Brady. Whoop the fucking do. No one cares. Go actually do something now. However, these fucking jerseys that they put out, which are the throwback. Can I? Can I? Can I just say? Go ahead. Thank you for matching the fucking jersey with the helmet. Yes. That helmet <laughs> is one of the best helmets out. Yep. And you finally put a jersey to match that helmet. I don't yeah. I don't know if there's any other team in pro sports that does the pewter, that kind of copperish color, but with the red. Yeah. Oh, even their all whites are gorgeous. The fucking red. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. God. And then that all pewter, oh phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Phenomenal. Abs kudos and yeah, they did a great job. And you downsized the logo, which was a big – this is like an oxymoron, but a big subtle problem with their jerseys of the past years, but all the negativity went to the alarm clock font. The hel the logo, the flag on the old helmets was like – it looked like the helmet had a headache, like it was just being constricted. Yeah, yeah. You downsized it. Uh -huh. It did 30%. It looks so much cleaner. Yeah. It's much less of a try hard. Yep. Um. I want yeah, exactly. one other statement on the NFL. If you're, it seems like like either the league or Nike is pushing to rebrand and redo things, which is fine. I got no problem. Certain teams like actually need it. At the, I'm at a point now where let's say you're the Colts because the Colts jerseys are the Clay Thompson jerseys in the NFL. They're just swaggerless and boring. Um, I personally. <laughs> With I, I think we're at a point where we can mandate a th three legitimate uniforms and don't give me the bullshit of your color rush is your home jerseys with your away pants in one. Fuck that. Right. Give me uniqueness. Give me something. Yeah. Case in point, Detroit has great colors. That gray color rush is fire. If that's yeah. a template for you to build yeah. on for a team like the Colts, Please do because why? You have gray face masks. Yeah. You can't you can't do something like that. Which by I the mean, way, get rid of the fucking gray face masks too. Those are fucking awful. I mean, look at you know, as a yeah. Bronco fan, our main jersey's orange. Away jersey mm -hmm. white. Sometimes we occasionally wear the old navy blue. But for color rush, we still go with an orange, but it's more of a, a throwback looking jersey. We for our color rush, we even brought out the old school logo for the helmet. Yeah, your color rush are some of the best in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That orange is beautiful. Yeah. And even Sean, sure. your your guy's color rush is your like Thanksgiving like Yeah, that that, that jersey, that's honestly, jersey. that's one of my favorite jerseys is your Thanksgiving jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Than your home with, all, with the all white pants, yeah. The Steelers have great mm -hmm. jerseys. Our best uniforms by far are the color rushes. With, yeah, the, with the yellow that numbers. Ugly bumble yeah. shit. Well, those – I was actually at the last game they will ever wear those at. Those are permanently done. Thank God. I know. Oh. 
between yeah. that and the wow. Packers throwback is horrible. The Pat, well, yeah, that's that that one's fucking bad. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm at a point now where if we've learned anything from college football, if you're the NFL, Nike is a great partner to have. Yes. Certain teams like Alabama don't fuck with anything, and it's timeless. Then you have teams like Oregon who do literally the most and still Pastors always look football. good. They honestly, always, honestly, that oh. might be one of Oregon's best recruiting. It is. It is. You know, uses. Hey, it is. You're gonna you're gonna play no here. Question. You're gonna have 50 different jerseys. You're gonna have all these custom. You'll Nike never wear the same Jordan. helmet, jersey, pants, cleats combo in the four years and you're I, here. We're talking about in every sport: basketball, yeah. female basketball, female mm-hmm. softball, baseball. Yep. Yep. Case in point, even. I'll, I'll, I'll one-up Oregon. And E, you're not going to like this. Sean, you'll love it. The Carolina Tar Heels. Classic colors. Yeah. Woo! Classic everything. With the baseball team. It is, though. He's with right. The, with the baseball team. Okay, you baseball have team. a navy blue with the baby coloring. Gorgeous. You had a black at one point. That's also fucking gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah, the black Vanderbilt. Yeah. yeah. Vanderbilt yes. has Vanderbilt some of the best fucking baseball, baseball jerseys. Yeah. The black with the gold pinstripes. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I love those. Well, I've seen those. To before. be honest, we'll even show Nike even better this year when baseball actually starts. Yeah. Last right. last uh take a deep podcast, me and Luke talked about the Padres and oh. And even the but and he, Nike was even oh, yeah. enough to dumb down the the Diamondbacks jerseys. Yeah, and get rid of that stupid fade. Like mm-hmm. let Nike stop. If you're the NFL, give Nike a hundred percent control of your rebrand, and they probably won't fuck it up. Yeah, they just won't. Exactly. Why not? Give me one example of a team they fucked up where they had complete control. You can't. Exactly. You're not. You're not going to have that. No, you're not. This is what they do. Yeah. But I think we have run the table here in terms uh, of our topics. Yeah, one thing before we, we end it. up. This weekend, the first part of the Jordan doc. Oh, fucking right. ESPN. Yep. Everybody, you know, stay tuned. Definitely. Look out for that. Yep. That'll be a nice topic for next week. Sure. Podcast. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely gonna have to dive into that. Yeah. Um, also, before we go, um, on behalf of everybody here in Jones for Sports, um, we hope everyone's staying home and staying safe, and just keep doing your part to end all of this, so we can get back to sports the way we're supposed to be watching it and and talking about it. Um, but other than that, just stay safe. Yeah. Um. Yeah, to all the nurses, doctors, God bless y'all right now. Uh, other essential people that are actually fighting this, God bless you. Um, stay the fuck home. All all the good video games are on sale right now. Just fucking go play those. Download them. Go nuts. Call of Duty's a thing. If you haven't downloaded that, wake up. Just go do something. Without actually leaving your house. Yeah. Unless you have to. Don't yeah. leave your fucking house. Just don't do it. Anything else, boys? That's, it. That's about it. Um, follow us on all the social media. And Patreon. And Sean's TikTok. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely check me out on TikTok. TikTok, yo. I'm popping on that bitch. Yep. Uh, 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 so yeah this is luke this is e this is sean coming to you live from quarantine central we will see y'all in a couple days peace hey